Mountain FM, and good morning to you. Bob Lankert is here for the Evergreen Conservancy, and it's good to see him again. And, Bob, you've got a couple of folks with you this morning. Yes, I do. I have my colleague, Jamie Towthit, who's with Evergreen Conservancy, and she's going to talk about a very important uh, thing that happened to us this past week. Mm -hmm. Jamie? Very good. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm just lovely. I'm Wonderful. just lovely. Now, so what? what's the big thing? Um, so the Evergreen Conservancy was recently awarded the PA Governor's Award for Environmental Excellence. Wow. Yeah, very exciting. So we got that for our tromp out at our Tonoma Wetlands, mm -hmm. um, which is our abandoned mine drainage reclamation ponds. That is such a big deal. Um, and the Tonoma Wetlands is a, is a treasure that not many people know about. Exactly, yeah. Even though we talk about it here all the time. Well, you all listening right now should go out and check it out. There you go. There you go. So what was the award, uh, the award specifically for? So we installed a tromp last year, which is it's a passive hydraulic air compressor. So it has no electricity and it has no moving parts and it just uses uh, moving water to help bring air from the end of the system all the way back to our first pond. And that helps put dissolved oxygen in the water so that can get some of the extra iron out. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about acid mine cleanup, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yeah. The Tonoma Wetlands Project uh, is, that's one of the components at Tonoma, but there are more things there, aren't there? Yeah, there are. We have a renewable energy display. Um, we have a really nice storybook walk out there right now. Um, we have a lot of solar panels. There's a, there's a light display actually at nighttime that's powered completely by our solar panels, which is pretty neat. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's a good place for a picnic. It's a perfect place for a picnic. <laughs> She said she was nervous. She's not nervous, Bob. <laughs> Bob, why did you tell me she was nervous? She just, she's a natural. She's a natural. She's a, she's a natural, which works perfectly with the Evergreen Conservancy because it's all about nature. Yeah, yes. well, thank you. Well, congratulations. <laughs> and, and Bob, uh, DEP also awarding over the weekend something else for Evergreen Conservancy as well. We had that in our news. You're not even aware of that, are you? No. Well, I'll just pull the item out right here. The Evergreen Conservancy will receive $3,000 for the Indiana County Geo Trail. Did you know that? I did not know that. Well, That's yeah. fantastic news. The state announced that on Friday. Jamie is excited. Look at that. She's yeah. signaling a touchdown. We got yeah. the grant. You got yeah. the grant. $3,000 from the State Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, it's their environmental education grants. You get 3000 smackaroos. Nice. Did you, put, did you put in an application for that? Or? I that my first week here, or was the first month I wrote that grant. It was my first grant I ever wrote. Congratulations. The first grant you ever wrote and you got it. I know. How exciting. <laughs> what a good day. <laughs> See that, Bob? We, we sprung <laughs> that on that's her. That's Jamie. We sprung that. <laughs> that's Jamie. <laughs> All right, so who's batting second and has to follow that leadoff hitter? Uh, Herb Gladish is next, and he's going to be talking about part of the program that's happening on Friday. Good morning, Herb. How are you? Good morning. Oh, I'm good. doing fine. How, about, how are you? Wonderful. It's good to talk to you again. I will, I've been president of the Historical Society of Indiana. I've been the treasurer. I've been the vice president. And uh, in, in those days, I helped establish a a mining museum here in Indiana, and mm -hmm. it's part of the Indiana County Historical Society. I'm the curator of industrial history for, for the uh, museum. Uh -huh. We have a great museum over there. The, the, uh, uh, the director we have, John Bogart, is a real blessing to us, mm -hmm. and it's grown, and it's become the County Historical Society. Yeah. So I've been asked by Bob, thank, thank Bob for that. I'm being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell her <laughs> <laughs> to to give a talk on mining in Indiana County, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of my interests. When I started with the coal company in 1970, uh, most many of the men worked there. All men, sorry, okay. all men that worked. All men worked there. Jamie's, all Jamie's cleaning up that what I those know. guys did right now. <laughs> I know he's doing a good job. Uh, that I got interested in their stories mm -hmm. about the old days, and especially the ball players and those who worked in the mines prior to this new uh, these these new mines that we opened up. Yeah. So I got interested in mining history. Mm -hmm. I'm from a steel town, McKeesport, and I've been always interested in industrial history. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is talk about the uh, the, the mining in Indiana County. Most people think it started at the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. It didn't. It started in 1814 in Salzburg. Wow. 
when they started to uh, take the brine from the wells, heat it, and produce salt. Some of the best salt in the United States was produced right here. Mm-hmm. And so it started then. But when the railroads came in 1904 and 1903, in the early 1880s, we started to see big mining companies come in, Mm -hmm. and that changed the whole picture of the county as far as mining goes and as far as immigration goes and as far as the demographics of the population grew. Mm. So I'd like to talk about that. My hobby has been nicknames of miners, so I make a point of getting all all my old buddies to what you what were they trying to figure out are their nicknames mm-hmm. make a list of their nicknames i visited most of the coal mining sites in indiana county where there were towns and there were i think i have 63 on my list wow. i know that there's some more that i'll before i leave this earth i'll do that do yeah. some more of that but so i'm interested in where the people lived what they did uh, how the mines work how long they worked uh, i'm not so much interested in disasters but that's part of the industry, mm-hmm. and I, I also research that. Piecing together the history of Indiana Exactly. County. Yeah. And I'll have a display of artifacts. Oh, yeah? Do you have an anticipated opening date? For? For whatever it is that you're going to put together finally, or, or is that well, something that's it, ongoing? It's, it's ongoing. Uh-huh. It's okay. been there since we've gotten the armory in 2003 or four. Oh, when okay. that armory. Okay. We, have it. we invite people to come in and uh, view them and visit our museum. We have so much more there than just mining history. We yeah. have a military museum mm-hmm. that will knock your socks off. Yeah. So My granddad used to tell me the stories while we would go up and we would split wood in the summertime. And what he did was he would always, um, he would work in the mines in the summertime to stay cool. Uh, or, <laughs> or, or he would work outside doing outside construction, which was what he wanted to do. And then he would work in the mines in the wintertime to stay warm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the mines were always a constant temperature. Right, 52 and degrees. The animals that he used on the farm, the mules that he used on the farm, came out of the mines. Um, and, but they were blind because they spent their entire mm-hmm. life underneath, under the ground. And when they outlived their usefulness, he would bring them home. He'd walk them home from the mine to the farm. Hmm. Uh, th- that sort of That's history. That's interesting. I yeah. like that. Yeah, in fact, we would go all over the farm and he'd say, there's a mule buried right there. I buried him in 1936 <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, granddad. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, that's that's the sort of thing that uh, those sorts of stories are what you're after. That's what I'm after, those yeah. sorts of stories and and, uh, and, where, and where we go now. I worked for Consol when, when they uh, ceased their mining operations in Indiana County. So mm-hmm. so I saw the end of the the large mining companies here in yeah. the county. Yeah. Uh, and now we have, we have Rosebud here, thank God for them. Mm-hmm. But there is still some mining done in the county. And it, it's done very environmentally uh, – secure if if that's the right word i'm looking for but it's you know we we don't throw stuff in the streams like in the old days yeah yeah it's a whole different enterprise it's a whole different enterprise it sure is yeah wonderful wonderful bob come on you've you've got one other thing to to visit with us on here this morning don't you well i'm I'm representing dr jim doherty Mm -hmm. who's in sick bay today okay but if anyone has ever said to you do you know that you live in Appalachia? Then you've probably met Dr. Jim Docker. Oh, yeah. Because he's Mr. Appalachia. Okay. And he, he is the founder of the Northern Appalachian Folk Festival mm-hmm. and uh, Northern Appalachian Studies. Uh, and he's edited several books. And what he's going to do is to pick up uh, from where Herb leaves off. And the way that I look at that, in the mid-1970s, Indiana County had the lowest unemployment rate in the state, and even U.S. News and World Report uh, labeled us a boom town. Mm-hmm. Well, you know that didn't last. And that's what Dr. Doherty is going to be talking about. He's going to be talking about the technology that eliminated jobs for the actual miners, mm-hmm. and he's going to be having oral history projects and uh, a, a video of a mine strike, which was the goal of which was to save uh, the miners' jobs. And you'll find out okay. how it turned out when you come on Friday, 6 o'clock, at uh, Blue Spruce Lodge. This Friday? This Friday. This coming Friday, 6 o'clock, Blue Spruce Lodge. Yes. Is where Jim Doherty's going to put on this program? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. That sounds great. 
Well, my goodness, the Evergreen Conservancy has been a busy, busy place lately, and they won their grant. Congratulations once again, Jamie. I, and, uh, and Bob, thanks for bringing those folks in with us here today. We appreciate it. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented as always by First Commonwealth Bank here on AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM. Fox News is coming up at the top of the hour. That's just a couple of minutes away. Uh, Josh Whittison is in the newsroom this morning. Had an accident right in front of the courthouse. A vehicle went up onto the steps there this morning at about 730. Josh will tell us about that and more. And Jack Benedict is on the way with sports as well. 